Uh, nations are used today to measure uh, GDP, as we all know, and that was for many years, I would say one century, the most important way of measuring what we are and what we do. But from time to time, we begin to realize that uh, GP, GDP is far from enough, because GDP measures one tiny element of the flows of things and events, not all the different flows. And flows are not everything because there are slopes, flows and there are stocks. And flows are done out of stocks, creating stocks or destroying stocks. Stocks of nature, stocks of human beings, stocks of uh, human living and animals. Therefore, we need to have a better understanding of the relations between flows and stocks and different natures of flows. And also, we need to have another understanding of what means the reason of all of us to be on this planet, the reason for all of us to try to live here. Are we only here to live to get more financial resources, more money? Are we here only uh, to be uh, more wealthy, affluent? Of course, it is needed. When uh, one billion people tonight will sleep without uh, having enough food and will be starving, there's still always a need for that. But it's not the only thing. We all need to have a real goal in life, a philosophical goal, which is, can be for each of us a religious goal or a philosophical, uh, uh, not religious one or whatever, but we need to have a goal. And this goal is very often measured and said and now defined as happiness which is a world vague enough to be understood by each of us differently. Each of us differently have a different conception of what is happiness. Uh, what is interesting from my perspective or our perspective is to say that if you want to measure happiness at the level of individuals, it is very uh, subjective and it has to be done by each of us as we speak, as we understand it. I would say that to be happy means that you realize what is deep in yourself, which is very rare. Not a lot of people are in situation to do why they are on earth. Uh, we are in the jail of our life because we are born in a specific country, in a specific time, in specific families, and this is a kind of jail. We try to escape from this jail and do what we can to be fully ourselves. That's the definition of happiness. Realize who we are. Try to be happy by finding a way to discover what is the main reason of our presence on Earth. But if we want to go on a macro level, to look at the reason why uh, a nation is there, a uh, human species is there, we need to find another dimension or another definition of happiness. And in my view, there is no better way to understand happiness than to look at the way each individual is looking at his relations with his children. When we look at the relations to our children, we uh, understand that one of the main role of each of us on this planet is to make sure that our children are in a better situation than we are. And very often we act like that. We try to do things in order for our children to be better raised than we were, to have better opportunities that we, were, that we had, and to have better ways of becoming themselves that we have or we had in the past. If we think seriously, we realize that this is the most important or one of the most important challenge of our life to make, create conditions for the um, well-being or better being of next generations. And if we look at the world in the past centuries with pro and cons, with difficulties and challenges, in many dimensions it has been true that next generation will be better off than past generations. It's true in this part of the world, but it's true everywhere. Of course, with tragedies, wars, epidemies, uh, scandals, uh, a lot of uh, unfairness and, and, and tragedies. But all in all, next generation has been better. And we know that from figures, we can make a long list of figures that demonstrate that the generation of today is better than following the previous generations on many items, violence, poverty, uh, education, uh, 
uh, GDP per capita, many, many different dimensions, even violence, which is not so sure and so obvious, but it is true. And the key question for me is, what is the most important definition of happiness as a global issue for a family, for a company, or for a nation is, are we able to maintain this goal to have a world of a company, of a family, in a better situation in next generation than now? In a way, in a certain sense, it's quite easy to understand, to relate it to the uh, personal happiness. I'm sure that all of us, all of you have experimented that, and uh, it's a pity if you have not yet experimented that. But nothing can make you more happy than to feel that your children are happy. That you think that your children have a better chance to have a better life than you. And even it's true in a selfish way of thinking. Because not only I'm happy if my children are smiling, but if they are happy, they will, uh, if they are not too much ungrateful, they will come back to us, to me or to you, and say, thank you. And they even be in position to help you in many countries where there is not enough pensions, funds organized, uh, all people rely on the support of young generations. And in all ways, we, we rely on the support of former genera uh, next generations. There is a very interesting sentence said by Marx. I mean, Groucho Marx, not Karl Marx, uh, which is also an interesting thinker. Groucho Marx said, I don't know why should I care of next generation, they have done nothing for me, which is not true. It's interesting, but not true, because suppose that, just for the way of thinking, as we speak now, there is no one uh, giving birth to no new baby from now forever. There is no next generation. Okay, if there is no next generation, in one year there will be no need for kindergarten, no need for schools, and then later on, there will be no one to replace people going to retirement. There will be no one to finance retirement. And the whole of humanity will collapse. Each of the people living here, if there is no next generation, will have a terrifying future. Because the whole of the economy and the world will collapse. Therefore, it is in the cynic, selfish, rational interest of each of us, of each of you, to have a better future for next generation. It's not a matter of uh, a naive altruism. It's a matter of cynic rationality. We need for happiness to have a better future for next generation. And in order to do that, uh, to understand how we on the good track to do it, uh, we at the Positive Planet Foundation, we have tried to measure, to quantify, because if you want to have a concept clear, you need to quantify it. And then you discuss the quantification. Is it good? Is it not good? Is it precise enough or not? That's the best way to have an objective and rational discussion. Therefore, we created an index to measure the positivity of nations. And we measure the positivity of nations through uh, a global index composed by 45 different dimensions. We measure the different dimensions of what means to be good for next generation. Some are obvious, which is demography, uh, public debt, uh, education. Uh, some are less obvious, uh, such as uh, the role of women, uh, uh, freedom of press, uh, global good governance, etc., etc. And when you have such an index, not only you can know who your, where your country is about uh, the preparation of future, which, as I said, is a rational, a selfish decision for yourself as we speak, but you can also try to see how to improve it. And to make a long story short, as it is very difficult to get all the statistics needed to get this measurement, we began by doing it for the uh, 40 countries of OECD. And uh, on that, we have done that since uh, more than six years now, and it's clear that uh, uh, the ranking of nations is stable, not very much changing from year to year. Even some countries are improving in some dimensions. <clears throat> the first nations are nations from Northern Europe, Iceland, Sweden, 
globally Scandinavia. For, for, it's, not, it's very interesting, but not difficult to understand. One of the reasons that those countries are more interested in looking for the future is a, a, a very simple reason. When you live in a cold country, you need to prepare food for, for the winter. While when you live in a affluent, sunny place, not like a desert, but an affluent, sunny place, you can hope that you'll have something to eat, whatever happened. It's the reason why northern countries, cold countries, are more prepared to look at the long term than uh, sunny countries. Scandinavian countries are the first in our ranking, and the last uh, in the ranking of OECD countries are the um, Mediterranean countries, <coughs> Turkey, Greece, Italy, strangely enough, also uh, Japan is among the, the last of them, and some others. Unfortunately, I must say that France is not in a good position, it's only 20. The US is between 11 and 20 and uh, 12, according to different uh, years. And it's very interesting to see that this ranking has helped already a lot of, of those countries to say, oh, wait a minute, we need to do more on that, and more on that to improve. We have been proud to be asked uh, last year by uh, a minister, uh, Highness Minister of Happiness in uh, this country to do uh, the measurement of the uh, index of uh, the uh, this country, uh, and it was a bold decision for your country to do it because we, we decided to do it openly with all the existing statistics, with no bias, uh, even if you were bold to try, you could have ended as a disaster because you could have been finalized as being uh, one of the last. And it's the first time I do it for non-OECD countries. And the result is not so bad because uh, uh, with uh, uh, results which is going to be public in detail uh, today, uh, uh, your country is number eight, uh, ranking equal to New Zealand, Germany, and Canada, which is not so bad, to say the least, not so bad. Of course, we see a lot of room for improvement for each country. We see a, a lot of room for improvement for your country. But at least you have a very good beginning. And I hope that we will collaborate in the future to help you improve this transition of positivity, which is not only true for a country, which is true for companies, which is true for cities. We do it for cities. We do it for companies. And it's very important to do it uh, as, as largely as possible. It's very important for each of us in each of our decisions to say, are we doing what we do for the sake of next generation. Is anything that we do today is good for next generation or not? And if you think of your daily life on this basis, if you think of any decision of a budget, private budget, public budget, company budget, with that in mind, is it good for next generation? You will see that it gives a, a way of thinking which is very different, which is very close to the way of thinking that you should have or you have as a parent when you save money to do things good for the children, but you don't save for doing good for the country. Uh, you don't make as much sacrifice for the country that you do for your own family, which is wrong. Because we should remember that next generation are equivalent to our children. The whole of next generation are the children of this generation. We in this room are the parents of next generation and we should behave uh, in favor of next generation as we should be able, or as we behave for our own children. That's the condition for our own uh, happiness. I must say that when we look at the global index of positivity of a planet, which means global index of positivity of not the whole of the planet because we don't have all the statistics, but the whole positivity of the OECD countries. Unfortunately, we realize that the positivity of whole OECD is declining, not improving. Even in some countries are improving from year to year, globally it's declining, which is a sign of a fact that we care more of today than tomorrow, 
that we are more selfish than altruistic, that we commit suicide for, against mankind every day by not taking care of long term and by not taking care of our own happiness. Thank you very much.